Good morning, children. Today's lesson: the portrait of a lady for class eleven. The summary, children. In the portrait of a lady, Kushwan Singh has given an account of his grandmother. It's a beautiful story. Yes, throughout the story, he talks about his grandmother, his relationship with his grandmother. Yes, it was a very sweet relationship of grandmother and grandson. He draws a life-like portrait. She was very old. Her face was wrinkled. Yes, old people. It is very natural. Her hair was white. It was hard to believe that once she had been young and pretty. So now. Kushwan Singh finds it difficult to believe that once grandmother was very beautiful, yes, because she was young at that time. His grandfather's picture hung above the mantelpiece in the drawing room, so he wore a big turban. He had that stern sort of a look, very strict. His clothes were loose. He looked at least a hundred years old, so he looks very old in that picture. It was hard to believe that he had once a wife or children, because in that picture, in that photograph, the grandfather looks very old. So Kushwan Singh finds it very difficult to believe. That once he must have been very young, he must have had a wife, he must have had children. He finds it difficult to believe. Who? Kushwan Singh. Kushwan Singh's grandmother was a short lady. So grandmother is a short lady. She was fat and slightly bent. Children, why do you think she is bent? Because of old age. She couldn't walk straight. She hobbled about the house. Now walking with difficulty, that is called hobbling. So she hobbled about the house. Somehow she managed to walk. She had to keep one hand on her waist. Now so many times you must have seen very old people, those who are bent. You know, they they find it difficult to walk. So when they walk or when they are just standing, most often they happen to put their hand on their waist. It was to balance her stoop. Stoop is the bent, you know, that is called stoop. In the other, in the other, she held a rosary in one hand. So one hand she puts on her waist. The other hand she held a rosary. The beads, you know, you might have seen so many people in Hindi. We say japte hain. Each bead, you know, turn wise they touch and they keep chanting something. The same thing the grandmother does here. She was always telling the beads. Every bead you have to touch and chant something. Yes, her lips, it is like chanting of some mantras or something like that. Her lips constantly moved in prayer. Yeah, actually what one does is one keeps telling prayers by touching each and every bead in the rosary. She put on white clothes, her silver locks. So she was wearing white clothes. Her silver locks scattered over her pale face. Hair has turned grey. Why? Because of old age. She looked like snowy mountains in winter. So what happens uh, in winter in the mountains? Mountains are full of snow. Everything looks white. She was a picture of peace and contentment. Contentment is satisfaction. She was very old. Perhaps she could not have looked older. She looked the same for the last 20 years because she is very old now. Kushwan Singh and his grandmother were good friends. So grandmother is always dressed in white sari and she is a symbol of peace and contentment. She is a very satisfied lady. You know, his parents went to city. They left him with her in the village. So Kushwan Singh is left with grandmother in the village and where are the parents they have gone to the city she took good care of him so grandmother took good care of kushwan singh and all grandmothers they love their grandchildren they take good care of them yes 
she used to wake him up in the morning she got him ready for the school she said her morning prayer in sing song manner she hoped that he would learn it by heart but he liked her voice but never bothered to learn so kushwan singh was not bothered to learn the prayers then she would fetch his wooden slate she had already washed it and plastered it with yellow chalk she would take an earthen ink pot and a reed pen so all these things she would keep ready she would tie them in a bundle and hand it to him because now he would be ready to go to school she would she would so she would give him a thick slate stale sorry stale chapati chap so stale chapati opposite of fresh is stale with little butter and sugar spread on it so that is what she would give kushwan singh it was his breakfast so he would uh, get some stale chapati with a little butter and sugar spread on it uh, one thing let me tell you children love eating chapatis with a little ghee and sugar on it yes she carried several stale chapatis with her for the village dogs uh, she was very fond of birds and animals his grandmother always went to school with him the school was attached to the temple the priest taught children the alphabet and the morning prayer and the children sat in two rows in the veranda they would sing the alphabet or the prayer in a chorus yeah and that is how children learn pick up very fast how by singing you know small children a b c d also they sing and all that prayers also learning is faster by singing the grandmother sat inside the temple she would read holy books then they would walk home together so after his classes would were over they would go home together till then grandmother would be waiting there in the temple the village dogs would gather at the temple door they threw chapatis to them the dogs would growl and fight with each other why to eat the chapatis the narrator's parents sent for them in the city it was a turning point in their friendship they shared the same room but grandmother no longer went to school with him because now he's grown up who kushwan singh the narrator used to go to an english school in a motor bus there were no dogs in the streets so grandmother took to feeding the sparrows since there were no dogs she started feeding the sparrows sparrows are birds no years rolled by rolled by passed by they saw less of each other sometimes she would ask him what the teacher had taught him she did not believe in the things they taught at the english school she was interested only in uh, what you call holy things in prayers and such things she was unhappy she did not like english or science she felt sad that there was no teaching about god and the scriptures at school all religious scriptures had about god she was interested only in that the narrator one day told her that they were being given music lessons and definitely this was not liked by the grandmother she was rather disturbed she thought music quite indecent for her it was good only for prostitutes and beggars so it was not meant for gentle folk that means gentle folk should not go for all these things should not learn music and all that the narrator went to university so now it's time for him to go to university he was given a room of his own the common link of friendship was broken the grandmother accepted her loneliness quietly because there was no other option left for her she was always busy with her spinning wheel and reciting prayers yeah tibetans always do that children the buddhists and the tibetans i have seen there's a wheel sort of a thing which they hold in their hand they keep turning it and reciting prayers she rarely talked to anyone in the afternoon she relaxed for a while then she would feed the sparrows she sat in the veranda she broke the bread into little bits and then then what would she do she would feed the sparrows give them to the sparrows then she would throw them to sparrows hundreds of sparrows came there they created a hell of noise that means it was a noisy scene there some came and sat on her legs 
Others would sit on her shoulders. Why? Because they loved the grandmother. Some would sit even on her head. She smiled but never frightened them away. Feeding the sparrows was the happiest half hour of the day for her. See, she loved animals and birds. The narrator decided to go abroad for higher studies. So now the narrator goes abroad for further studies, higher studies. He was to remain away for five years. The grandmother was very old. By now grandmother was very old. Her condition is such that she could die any moment. The narrator was worried but the grandmother was not upset. She showed no emotion no emotion, no feeling of sadness, no feeling of happiness, nothing. She came to the railway station to see him off, to bid him goodbye. Her lips moved in prayer. All the time she was busy chanting prayers. Her mind was lost in prayer. Her fingers were busy telling the beads of her rosary. She kissed his forehead silently. The narrator thought that... It was the last sign of physical contact between them because she was very old. So, never know she would die any time, any moment. The narrator returned home after five years. His grandmother met him at the station. She did not look a day older. She did not speak anything. She held him in her arms. That means she welcomed him. She went on reciting her prayers. In the afternoon, she fed the sparrows as usual. Every day, that was a routine. In the evening, a change came over her. She didn't pray. She collected the women of the neighborhood. She got an old drum. She continued thumping the old drum, beating. Yes, for several hours, she started singing. She sang of the homecoming of warriors. That means it is a sort of a welcome extended. They had to persuade her to stop. She might overstrain herself. No, she, this she does out of excitement, out of happiness. It was for the first time that she had forgotten to pray. The next morning she fell ill. She was very sick. She had a mild fever. She told them that her end was near. Now she understood that she was going to die soon. So now grandmother understood that she was going to die that her death was approaching and so what happened she realized that she had forgotten to pray she had a mild fever she was very sick now she understood that she was going to die she did not want to talk she wanted to be left all alone it would be waste of time she ignored their request she lay peacefully in bed she was praying and telling beads so she's, she was busy praying the rosary fell down from her lifeless fingers. That means grandmother was dead. Her face looked pale but peaceful. She was dead. She was laid on the ground. She was covered with a red shawl. Arrangements for her funeral were being made. Now it was evening. The sun was setting. They brought a wooden stretcher. They stopped halfway in the courtyard. Thousands of sparrows sat near her dead body. It is as if the sparrows had come to have a last glimpse of the grandmother. Why? Because she loved the sparrows. Remember, every day she would feed them. They did not chirrup. That means the chirpings of the sparrows was not there. Everyone felt sorry for the birds. The narrator's mother brought some bread. She broke it into little crumbs. Crumbs means small pieces. She threw these crumbs to the sparrows. The birds took no notice of them. Then they carried her dead body outside. The sparrows flew away quietly. They did not eat the bread crumbs. The bread crumbs were still lying there in the courtyard. Evidently the sparrows had come to mourn the death of the grandmother. See? That means this shows that even the small creatures like the sparrows loved the grandmother. She was known for her love, care, affection and simplicity. So not only Kushwan but also the birds and animals were very fond of the grandmother. Why do you think so? Because she was so kind to them. 
Remember, every day she would feed the sparrows. And earlier, when Kushwan was small, was small, she used to accompany him to school. She, on her way back, she would feed the dogs with what? With stale chapatis. So this shows her kindness, her love for birds and animals. That is the reason sparrows had come to mourn the death of the grandmother. How does the author describe his grandmother? The author describes his grandmother as short, old, fat and slightly bent. To him she looked the same for 20 years. It was difficult for him to imagine her young and pretty because he has always seen her old but he found a beauty in her old age like the serene winter landscape. See, how is the winter landscape? The trees become lifeless. Nature looks so bare. But there is so much of beauty. You find so much of serenity, calmness in that. The same is the condition of the grandmother here. She looks so beautiful dressed in white. She is a symbol of peace, of calmness. Question, next question, how does the author react to the idea of the grandmother being young at a point of time and playing games? The author could not conceive his grandmother as young and pretty, can't even believe that and playing games as a little girl. Yes, all small, all small children play games, yes. To him it was like one of the myths and fables she told him. Yes, it was unbelievable as if something that was not true. How did the grandmother prepare the author for going to school? The grandmother woke him up each morning, bathed him, dressed him and got him ready for school. Thereafter, she plastered his wooden slate. Thereafter, she plastered his wooden slate and gave him breakfast and walked him to school. While the author sat in the veranda learning the alphabet and morning prayers, the grandmother sat inside the temple reading the scriptures. Now let's move on to the next question. Why was the grandmother distressed by the education imparted in the city school? The grandmother disapproved of the author's education in the English school. They were taught science. This was also not liked by the grandmother. She could not understand English and did not believe in science. According to her, what was important? Yes, to be taught about God, the holy scriptures. It made her unhappy that they were not taught about God. The music lessons in school made her unha very unhappy as she felt that it was not meant for the gentle folk. Okay. We move on to the next question now. Why was it hard for the author to believe that the grandmother was once young and pretty? It was difficult for the author to believe that his grandmother was once young and pretty. In fact, he, the thought was almost revolting. It was very hard to believe he had seen her old for the last 20 years. He felt she could age no further. The, the very thought of her playing games as a child seemed quite absurd and undignified. That also he could never imagine. Next question. The grandmother has been portrayed as a very religious lady. What details in the story create this impression? Answer. The author recalls his grandmother as a very religious woman. He remembers her hobbling about the house, house, hobbling, walking with difficulty due to old age, telling the beads of her rosary. He recalls her morning prayers and her reading scriptures inside the temple. The author recounts how during the last few days she spent all her time praying. The next question. The grandmother had a divine beauty. Her beauty is compared to the winter landscape. You remember? How does the author bring it out? Answer. The grandmother was not pretty but had a divine beauty. She dressed in spotless white. Her silver locks were scattered untidily over her pale puckered face full of wrinkles. 
and her lips constantly moved in an inaudible prayer. The author describes her like the winter landscape in the mountains, a personification of serenity, breathing peace and contentment. What proofs do you have? Do you find a friendship between the grandmother and grandson in the story? The grandmother and grandson were very good. What? Friends. She got him ready and took him to school and also they brought him back from school. She would wait there. In the city, they shared a common bedroom. The author's grandmother saw him off silently but kissing him on his forehead when he went abroad and celebrated his return five years later. The grandmother was a kind-hearted woman. Give examples in support of your answer. The grandmother was a very kind-hearted woman. On her way back from school, she would feed the village dogs with stale chapatis. In the city, when she could not move out, she took to feeding sparrows. They came and sat on her legs, shoulders and head. This was a turning point in our friendship. What was the turning point? Yes, the turning point in the friendship arrived when they shifted to the city. They saw less of each other as she could neither accompany him to school nor understand English. She did not believe in science. She could not keep pace with the author's modern education that he received in the city school. Draw a comparison between the author's Village school education, village school education and city school education. The village school <coughs> was attached to a temple and the students were taught the alphabet and morning prayers. The author and his grandmother walked to the school in the village. However, in the city he went by the motor bus. So he went by motor bus. He was taught science and English but not taught about God. He was also taught music, which was not at all liked by the grandmother. How did the grandmother react to the fact that the author was being given music lessons? Why? The grandson's learning music in school made her unhappy as she felt it was not meant for the gentle folk. For her music had associations with beggars and harlots. She almost stopped speaking to the author. The grandmother's reception and sent off of her grandson was very touching. Comment on this. When the writer went abroad, the grandmother saw him off at the railway station, silently praying and telling her beads. She did not express her emotions and she kissed his forehead when he returned. She expressed Rest her joy by collecting women from the neighborhood, beating the drum and singing for hours together for the homecoming of the poor girl for the first time.